Uh, let's see here. I want you to go ahead and open up your Bibles. Just go to the book of Matthew. Have you turned somewhere special in Matthew? Um, that's the wrong sermon. There it is. I know uh, I talked to my dad and brother Storm this week. And then after... Uh, Brother uh, Brother Storm and my father and I got done talking. I uh, had to get off the phone. Uh, Brother uh, Storm called me later that afternoon, and we talked and um, just kind of gave him my heart a little bit about uh, our church and uh, what we've been through, how things have progressed, um, and shared with him um, the school and shared with him uh, the, the ensemble choir shared with him Saturday soul winning again. And I said, the next thing on the agenda is the bus ministry. And he gave me some pointers and he gave me some really good advice on things. And um, I started off in the bus ministry when I was nine years old, 3218 North Clinton Street. I asked my dad if I could join brother Chris Lipford's bus. Greg Keyes was the bus driver. Chris Lipford was the um, uh, bus captain. And uh, I was nine years old and I walked up and I remember looking up in the parking lot, it was at, it was a Wednesday or a Sunday night church, and I walked up and I remember looking up at my dad, and believe it or not, I was looking up at Chris Lipford, uh, and now I'm looking down at Chris Lipford, uh, <laughs> man of stature. Um, uh, but um, uh, I looked up and I said, "Dad, can I join? Can I get on the bus ride?" And uh, I had to ask Brother Chris Lipford first, and he said, "Ask your dad." And Dad said, "Yes." And from there on out, I was on the bus route. I was on the bus in the bu Brother Warren Storm said, "Don't call it a bus route. Call it the bus ministry. Call it the bus ministry." So I said, "Okay, the bus ministry from here on out." And uh, uh, it's not a route. This isn't City Link bus. This is a ministry. Those are people, souls, uh, and they're not just there to boost your attendance. They're people. Uh, so as uh, that unfolded. Uh, I was in the bus ministry for the time I graduated from high school. And then when I went to Hiles Anderson College, I went on the bus ministry for a year there. And then I transferred to uh, the sailor ministry, which was still a bus. We went up to the Great Lakes Naval Base, brought sailors to church. Um, the families fed them. Uh, it was great, man. The sailor ministry was, was a blast, but it was, still, it was really still a, a bus ministry because we went up and bust them in. Uh, and you had to behave on that naval base. Boy, oh boy, I'll tell you what. <laughs> if you misbehave and you're not, you know, you're not, you have no credentials, you know, what are you doing on this base? How'd you get on here? We've had some guys run into that stuff. And it was like scary, <laughs> scary. Uh, we went places we weren't supposed to go, buildings we weren't supposed to be in, you know. And hey, man, I was a freshman or I was a, I was a sophomore. I had no idea. Sophomore means wise fool. Uh, but uh, so I was... Wise to go along with the upperclassmen. But uh, so I've been in the bus ministry, bus ministry for quite some time. I've seen, I could tell you I've seen it all. Um, not as much as my dad has seen. You know, my dad was in the bus ministry for years and years and years uh, at all three locations. Uh, uh, First Baptist, Chico, and here. Um, and uh, things just got started. I, I, the Three Years Baptist Church, Mr. Bus, is, is right over there. He started it. He got it rolling. Um, and, um, uh, but anyway, I want to talk to you tonight, really, um, give you some information, good information on the why nots and the whys of the bus ministry, the why nots and the why of the bus ministry. Uh, let, let's pray. Heavenly father, help our church as we go forward, go forward, press on and run our race. Lord, as uh, the Pastor Jackson preached this morning, uh, we have to run our race that is set before us. Everybody's race is different. But when we come together as a church, a called out assembly, our race is one. And our race is others. And our race is the glory of God. Heavenly Father, help our church, bless our church. Lord, as we move forward, I'd ask that you would raise up leaders, raise up people, to stand in the gap and, and, and fill it, stand in the hedge. Heavenly Father, help us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the why not, the why of the bus ministry, the why of the bus ministry. Now, in any project, in anything you endeavor to do, 
um, both there are both pros and cons. Uh, I like doing that. When I get ready to make a decision, I do a pros and cons. I may not write it down, but I may verbalize it. I may say, okay, what are the pros of this and what are the cons? The pros, man, they far outweigh. I have a, something I'm getting ready to go do, and it's something I've never done before. I'm nervous about it, but the pros far outweigh the cons. And the Lord has shut doors to anything that would have let me escape this path. Because I've looked for an out. Because that one particular con I don't like. I'm like, Lord, I don't like that con. I don't, I'm not into that. So what I've done is I've, I've, I've kept in prayer and I've said, okay, let me see if there's any avenue out of this besides just flat out turning, tucking tail and running. Um, and there hasn't been. God has shut every single door <laughs> that I've looked to escape. Is that door cracked? Is that God? God goes, slam. One door was wide open, and I went and said, let me explore that door. And God was like, boom, and slammed that door right on my nose. I said, okay, I'm going to proceed, and I have faith in God. I have faith in God. And um, so, so the pros and the cons of the bus ministry, um, we have to consider those things. But what the first thing I want us to consider is two points tonight, why not and why. Why not? Now, there are several wrong reasons, and there are many unworthy motivations for the bus ministry being started in our church. There are a whole lot of reasons, unworthy, not right reasons to start a bus ministry. And I got to tell you, uh, as I thought on these, and I prayed on these, and I peered into my own heart, I had to say, man, that, that has been a motivation of mine, and it's wrong. Number one, why not start a bus ministry? Number one, it's wrong to start a bus ministry as a, um, uh, as a symbol of, uh, of righteousness, a symbol of status. It's wrong to start a bus ministry um, because everyone else is doing it or because no one is doing it. Well, we need to start a bus ministry because no one else is doing it. Was that the reason you're starting the bus ministry? Is if that's the reason you're starting the bus ministry, it's wrong. Back in the height of fundamentalism, bus ministries were a big thing. Big, big, big. Brother Warren Storm told me that they're dying out. It's dying. The bus ministry is dying across the nation uh, and that many churches do not emphasize it. There aren't very, very, very few uh, bus conferences anymore. Um, he said it needs help. Bus ministry needs revival. And I told him, man, I want to start the bus ministry. And I told Brother Warren Storm, I want to start it because God's laid it on my heart. And number two, it's time. It's time. I've been talking, it, I've been, and Miss Hillary knows, since we stopped running it, and we all blame it on COVID and everything like that, but we were struggling before COVID, but we were still running it. We were still going. We didn't give up hope. And it came along, and I've been talking about it since COVID. Ever since we all started gathering back together again after everybody was scared and everybody went and got their shots and all that wonderful stuff. And they all came back. And by the way, you got COVID again anyway. Uh, uh, but anyways, uh, uh, so anyway, I'm not touching the president. Uh, but um, all these people and everybody's scared and we don't know what we're doing and the whole world's confused. And then everybody says, okay, it's time to get back to normal. So here we are. We're all coming back to normal. And my, it's been on my heart the whole time. The bus says, the bus, the bus the bus, the bus, the bus. We've got to get on the bus. But why do we get on the bus? Because it's the fundamental Baptist way? Yeah, sure. Sure, but that's a wrong motive. It's a wrong motive. Why not to start the bus ministry? It's wrong to start the bus ministry just to boost our attendance at Three Years Baptist Church. Well, we're running 50, and, but if we ran a bus, we could probably run 100. We could probably boost our attendance to 80. Numbers, you know, because numbers matter. Sure they do. I, man, I like a full house. I do, man. I love it, man. I, how many of y'all remember the days when you have to pull out chairs and, light, and the choir had to stay up? And the balcony, man, we, we opened up the balcony because we needed the room. We talked about knocking out walls and fanning out the auditorium. We talked about, what can we put a balcony in here and what can we do? Why? Because, man, we started to burst at the seams, 
But we start, we were bursting at the seams because God was blessing because of the motive, not because we were trying to boost our attendance. We weren't trying to say, put us in the sword of the Lord. Look how many we're running. I, look, I mean, Pastor Jackson has had opportunities to travel this nation and preach for pastors. But he said, no, my place is, at my pl- my place is behind my pulpit with my people. God did not call me to be an evangelist for the rest of the country. He called me to be a pastor of my church. And uh, uh, he never looked to get his name out there. He's still not looking to get his name out there. We're looking, our church is looking to get his name out there. That's what it's always been about. Now, it's wrong to start a bus ministry for any type of status. It's wrong to start a bus ministry just to boost our attendance and um, uh, uh, boost our attendance and not have the thought of the personal passenger that is on the bus with their mind, with their heart in our mind. Where, where, where we just say they're just another rider. We have to think of their welfare. Now, for instance, some churches say, man, we got to push for Now, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with goals. There's nothing wrong with pushing for it. There's nothing wrong with that. As long as you keep the main thing the main thing. I like, man, we ought to have goals. We ought to have numbers. Man, I was uh, talking to uh, Jamal the other day, and uh, my brother Jamal, and he said, uh, we we're talking about being in our mid 30s and being kind of chubby. <laughs> and I told him, I said, man, I hit all personal records at the gym in the three major areas before my shoulder surgery. And um, uh, man, I pushed for that. I knew uh, January I was hurt. I went to the doctor. They said, yeah, it's torn. They scheduled me. I had surgery in March. And uh, at the gym, I knew, hey, it's torn. I'm going all out. I can't tear it anymore. It's torn. I'm going all out. And um, my, my um, instructor there, he's like, Jake, slow down. I said, no, I'm hitting all personal records because I'm getting ready to go under the knife and no telling how long it's going to be until I get back here. So um, I hit 315 on the bench. I hit, um, uh, well, no, it was 325. 325 on the bench, 415 deadlift, and a 405 barbell back squat where you put it here and you go down. Now I can't do it. My knees are hurting. But that exercising got my knees feeling better. I felt better. Man, I was juiced. I had all personal records. Why? I pushed for that. There's nothing wrong with pushing for records. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I remember many times, man, being exhausted after promotions, being exhausted after a bus, uh, after a bus day, being exhausted after these things. But there's got to be a reason for it. If the reason is, then will you put in your blood, sweat, and tears into the ministry and to, and to, to, to your church and to reaching the, reaching the, and to all to say, we had 500 in church today. Okay, and? What, that's it? That, that's, that's, you pushed for, so you could say you had 500? Man, I'm all for that. But it's gotta be, man, we got 500 people together and we preached the gospel to them. That's the height of it. And 30 of them got saved and 18 of them got baptized and nine of them joined the church and 12 of them went out and got their families and they're coming back next week and the Sunday school classes grew and all and there's strategies, I get it, there's strategy. But it's wrong to start a bus route, Three Rivers, just to boost our attendance. Number one, it's wrong for status. Number two, it's wrong just to boost our attendance. Number three, it's wrong to start a bus ministry simply to compete with other churches. And that's the one that got me. I see other church buses rolling around, and I'm like, get out of my neighborhood. I'm putting a spike strip out on the road. I'm throwing ice balls at them in the the wintertime. Get out, I'm going to put on a mask, you know, so they don't know who I am. (laughs) I'll put Pastor Doug Jackson on my shirt. No, I just, <laughs> uh, I'm going to get a, uh, I don't know, a gun turret and put it up on the, uh, a paintball turret and put it up on the steeple. Bah, 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 when they come around, they won't want to come here anymore. Well, you know what we ought to do? We ought to graffiti the building. Everybody start wearing colors. We'll start throwing up gang signs. They won't want to come here anymore, you know? Uh, no, of course, of course that. But it's wrong to say, you know what? We need to start a bus ministry because that other church has a bus ministry. I mean, I hate to say this, but it's Bible, folks. We're on the same team. (laughs) 
but get out of my spot. <laughs> uh, that, it's, that's what it's all about. I don't, I don't want that other church coming over here. I don't want other churches rolling through here. I stopped a church bus coming through, our, they're coming through our parking lot on a Sunday morning. I said, do you not have any ethics? Amen. And they're from the north side. I said, do you have ethics? Don't drive through our parking lot. Oh, well, brother. You know, brother me when we get to heaven. Get out of my parking lot. It's not, I'm not being, that's not about competition. It's called tact and ethics. I'm going to come park my bus on your parking lot and juice it up and burn out. I told these guys yesterday, uh, these, this low rider club, they're all cool guys. No problem with them. They came over here and we're doing donuts in their, uh, their um, low rider cars and they were all bumping up and down. It was really cool. But I walked over to him, big old Mexican dude named Chewy. And I went, no, I didn't. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Star Wars, you know. Uh, but uh, big, old, big old dude named Chewy and his brother Roberto and, and all these guys. And it's cool. I got no problem with them. They're cool guys. What they're doing in their cars and stuff. I went over there. Alex and I went over there. We looked at their cars and talked to them. And, and no problem. But I told him, I said, he said, man, if we get overflow, can we park in the parking lot? I said, yeah. I said, but no twerking. No drug using, no drinking, no fighting, no cussing, no smoking, no burning out in my parking lot. And he said, oh, 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 keep it clean. I said, yeah, keep it clean. But these guys came over here and were doing donuts for their Instagram thing. And I walked over, I was like, yo, no, 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 no. And he stopped and I looked at him. I said, hey, I know it ain't the prettiest parking lot, but it's the only one we got. I said, so please don't burn out in our parking lot. Don't do donuts in our parking lot. Oh, man, and he's got his kids in the car. I'm not going to walk over there and be like, what's wrong with you? That's, a, that's foolish. Wise as serpents, harmless as doves. But it's what we have. It's what we have. And we, Three Rivers Baptist Church, you, and, and I, don't think, I don't think it comes from a malicious spirit, folks. I don't think anybody here is malicious or sinister against other churches. I just believe it's that competitive gene that, you, that we have. It's just competitive. I don't, I, listen, I've got no animosity towards other churches of like faith in our, church, in our, in our uh, county who go out and reach people. Hallelujah. Bless God, they're reaching people. They're spreading the gospel. I'm glad we're not the only ones in, three, in, in Fort Wayne and Allen County that share the gospel. Because boy, oh boy, what a burden to bear. I'm glad there are others, but bless God, we, I want to be number one. So though I try not to make it a competition, it's not a competition with them. It's a competition with me. So number three is it's wrong to simply start a bus route to compete with other churches out of jealousy. Oh, we ran this and you ran that. We ran this, you ran that. Hang all that mess, man. That's wrong. That's pride magnifying ourselves instead of the savior number one it's wrong to start a bus ministry for status number two it's wrong to start a bus ministry just to boost your attendance number three it's wrong to start a bus ministry to compete and number four it's wrong to start a bus ministry simply to find a way to um reach the community we want to be a community outreach church we want to network with the community we want to it's it's wrong to simply say, and some other churches, listen, right? one fellow tell me, man, our church has got overflow of abundance of money. Uh, uh, it's wrong to say, hey, you know what? Let's just start a bus route. Like it's some spontaneous thing. Like you didn't pray over it. You didn't say, God, I think God wants me to reach this neighborhood. I think God has, has attached my heart somehow, some way. God is, 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 the Holy Spirit of God is speaking to me to reach this neighborhood and reach these families and reach these children and reach these, these, uh, these men and these women and to reach the elderly. And, and how can I reach them all? Well, I'm going to go get a minivan. I'll go get a passenger van. Bless God, we got a bus and we can put them on a bus. And to start a bus ministry because you prayed over it. It's wrong to start a bus ministry just simply spontaneously because you can. Start a bus ministry because it's needed. Start a bus ministry because it's been prayed over. Start a bus ministry because it's vital. Now, it's also wrong to use the bus ministry um, uh, and um, not think of the people that are involved with it. Now listen, folks, when Three Rivers gets started and people commit to the bus ministry, those of us, uh, those of you, those of us 
who, who may not be directly involved with the bus ministry through sweat and tears type of thing, uh, we got to be prayer warriors for them. We have got to pray for them. Um, I've always said, I've always thought that the church is, is its own mobile, that, or excuse me, that the bus ministry and the bus captain, it's almost like it's his own little church on wheels. Those are his congregants. Those are his people. He has went out and the workers have went out and made one-on-one -on -one contact. Listen, I think this time around, there needs to be personal, real personal contact with the parent, with the guardian, with the parent who are involved with the children. Personal contact. You want to know why? Because they are people. They're people. And when kids come to this church and they get saved and they get baptized, you know what happens? They become members of this church. Did you know that? Members of this church. These little members... Five-year-old, seven-year-old, 10-year-old, 12-year-old, 15-year-old, 18-year-old, adults that come and get saved, get baptized. They're members of this church, and it is our duty to help meet the need when needed. Now, let me tell you, I'll get, I don't want to get away from my notes, but we have to remember that they are people, and we have to take care of those people. And we have to think of those people. They're not just little dirty old bus kids. They are people. Now, when the church assumes responsibility, and we do, for these children, we must realize there will be, listen, and we can all, speak, we can all share stories. There will be family problems. There will be fights. There will be conflicts. conflicts there will be drinking. There will be um, drinking. The bus captain's like, gug, 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 after work because he's, and the kids, uh, family problems, fathers who won't provide for their families, absentee mothers, which is becoming a pandemic in this, country, in this nation, mothers who just kids wake up and mom's not there. Mom's not there. Dad's not there. But dads who won't provide for their families, moms who leave, grandparents who are, who are um, worn down and beat down, and they're doing anything and everything they can to take care of the grandchildren just by having a place for them to sleep because of absentee, broken, deplorable parents. Many other things that are very similar uh, to the things that I just said, but it's life. But the people that are involved, and the bus captain has to iron it out, and the bus worker has to iron it out. You know, we've had people through the years call us every time they were arrested. Can you bail me out? Every time that there was a, um, a, a problem, can you come help me? 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 It's, it's insane. It's madness. Now, I run into, um, and you have, especially my dad, he's got stories to share for days about the bus ministry we run into people that we would call deadbeats. You're a deadbeat. On the bus routes, you walk into bus routes and you wonder if anybody even lives there because there's no furniture. Um, the walls are saturated in nicotine. There's some garbage music video on the television. Dad's hung over or, or, or high or strung out, or gone. Mom's barely hanging on. She's at a job somewhere working. It's up to the 12-year-old brother to take care of the five-year-old sister. They're dirty. 12-year-old's doing all he can to take care, of the, take care of everything. He's got to fight for himself and fend for himself. See, these aren't just bus kids. These are people who have souls. But we've run into people deadbeats but but you're going to run into people who constantly require attention and it's the worst it's one thing to pray for a kid and buy him some, buy him some shoes buy him a suit buy the little girl a dress give them bibles but as soon as the deadbeat adults find out that there's a vein of supply can you help me with groceries you know what this is right here? 
hand out, hand out, hand out, hand out, hand out. I don't mind giving people a hand out because sometimes the response is silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. And that is the gospel. That is the gospel. And people who are really looking for a real handout, they'll accept the gospel. We've had Turkey Sunday where we've had 75 families show up and we've had, they'd, they'd come out of the line and we'd have them a, a, an apple pie or a pumpkin pie and canned goods and a big old turkey and corn and whatever else they needed. And they'd walk out and never darken the doors here again. You're saying, well, why, do you, and why in the world do you put in all that work? Why do you stress and spend all that money? Because that may be the one time that they come to church and hear a real representation of the gospel. So it's worth it. It seems like a waste because a pastor and a church who is looking for church growth and numbers and status and attendance will be highly disappointed. But if you're just looking to preach the gospel and compel them to come in, we won't be disappointed. My dad was um, mudding some stuff out here, and he was listening to Brother Hiles. And Brother Hiles was talking about the little guy, the guy who ran 50 his entire ministry, and the guy who ran 5,000. 5,000 doesn't make you great. Faithfulness makes you great. Numbers don't make you great. This isn't the NBA. This isn't the NFL. This isn't about numbers and statistics. This is about faithfulness. This is about heart. This is about motive. It's hard. A bus ministry is hard. It's hard because you have to deal with all these different kind of people. And it, But I will tell you that I don't have this in my notes, but the bus ministry will make you grateful for what you have. The bus ministry will make, if you're in it and you're able to get into the homes and you invest in the families and you invest in those kids, You'll be grateful. It'll help you be grateful. Now, I do not, um, I don't advise Three Rivers Baptist Church to start a bus ministry, um, to be in the business. Folks, this is hard to do because you got to learn to say no. We are not in the business of social rehabilitation. I am not here, this Three Rivers Baptist Church is not here to get you on your feet. If you want that, go to the Catholic Church. We're not here to house you into home you and to feed you and to pat you on your back and change your diaper and burp you and make sure you get on your feet. We're not here for social rehabilitation. We're here for total transformation. And the way for total transformation is be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Well, how do you, re how do you renew your mind? Um, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. People don't take the Bible seriously. People don't read it seriously. It is not the be-all, end-all of their life. Right back there, it says Baptist distinctives. It's biblical authority. The Bible is, the Bible is the boss of my life. We grew up saying the Bible is the word of God. The Bible is the word of God. The Bible is the word of God. It doesn't just contain the words of God. It is the words of God. And I love that I, I possess the words of God. You see, folks, this right here is a how-to manual. It's a manual that says how to raise your family, how to, listen, and by the way, let me, let me just throw this out there. You're going to go ahead and do everything right and do it by the book, and it still won't turn out right. It doesn't mean you did it wrong, and it doesn't mean that God isn't on his throne, and it doesn't mean that God didn't pay attention, and it doesn't mean that it's not going to turn out right. Bless God, the Bible says, Romans 8, 28, that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Now, you don't always know the purposes of God, but bless God, you do know what the Bible says, and the Bible says that it is impossible to, uh, to, impossible to please him if you don't have faith. Now, bless God, you just buckle down your faith and put on your seatbelt, put on your helmet, buckle up, strap into the word of God, and say, come hell or high water, I'm not abandoning my Lord. I'm taking, I, 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 I rest upon his promises. We sit there and sing it. We sing it, resting on the promises. Do Are you? Leaning on the everlasting arms. Are you? 
Are you doing it? There's nowhere in the Bible that says stop leaning, stop resting, give up, quit. The top 10 reasons to quit are nothing. There are no good reasons to quit. No good reasons to quit. And bless God, if you do quit, I'm still going to love you. If you do quit, I'm still going to be here, bless God, when you come back. And if I quit, I hope that if I ever come back, I find you here. Now, I don't plan on quitting, but I don't know the purposes of God besides this, that his son will be glorified, and I want to have a part in that. I want to have a part in Jesus Christ being glorified. But if we get off track and use our bus ministry and use our food bank and use our clothing closet to social rehabilitation people, we're failing. I'm all for giving out coats. I'm all for giving out food. I'm all for transportation to church. I'm all for those things. But if it just becomes this monotonous thing that we do because it's good works, hang all that mess. Hang it. It's got to be because that person has a soul, and that soul is going to perish one day. It is appointed unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment. And we have to keep that in mind, setting our affections on things above, not on things on the earth. We've got to keep that in mind. I'm all for helping furnish people's homes. Don't you remember some years, many years ago, we took donations to buy a family. A mother was in a wheelchair who had two young daughters, and we bought them a refrigerator. And man, that's all they wanted was a refrigerator. And we bought those girls Christmas shoes and clothes and toys and all oh, the joy that came from their face. Why? Why? Because it was Jesus loves us. Jesus gives us and we want to love others. There's nothing wrong with giving, but it's got to be the main thing stays the main thing. We're not just going to become some social network church where, oh, yes, I know so-and-so downtown. Hang all that garbage. You know so-and-so downtown, but have you ever given them the gospel? I want so-and-so downtown, and I want the police chief and the fire marshal and the, the, uh, uh, the neighborhood watch. I want all them folks to know, hey, that's that, they, they got the gospel down there. That's who they are. I told this dude over here, Chad, runs dynamic tuning or whatever. I said, this is my neighborhood. So this is my neighborhood. I'm the pastor of this church in this neighborhood. I want everybody in this neighborhood to know who I am. I said, so I'm going to go around and knock on people's doors. Hi, I'm Pastor Jake. I pastor this church right down here. I just want to introduce myself. That's it. And if it more leads to it, then more leads to it. But it's not about me. Man, folks, I become all things to all men that I might by some means win some. All means win some. I want to win somebody, amen. I want to see some, bringing my sheaves with me. And the bus ministry can count. The bus ministry is important. The bus ministry is, in, is vital to outreach in our community. Now, I need, to, I need to hasten here. So any church that is trying to launch a bus ministry, we must be willing to take the people exactly as they are. Broken people. Uh, Pastor Jackson said time ago, some time ago, uh, most people aren't bad, they're just broken. Most people aren't bad. They're broken. They're broken. Well, what has broken them? The system. The world's system. The world, the flesh, and the devil. Music has broke them. Fornication has broke them. Or I should say for the young people, it's, it's untaught ability how to control their hormones toward the opposite sex. Young ladies not taught how to value their bodies and the purity of themselves. And to cover that, they think that they have to look sexy to appeal a man because men are looked at and, appeal, and, and talked about as pigs. Men are pigs and o- men only look at the curves. And men only are, it's, it's everything in this world today is sex appeal, sex appeal, sex appeal. Tight clothes, showing what your mama gave you, they say. Most people aren't bad. Most girls who wear those clothes, they're not, I don't know, I want to use some sort of derogatory term. They're not wicked women. They're not prostitutes. They're lost. Most guys who come in and they look all weirded out, they're not bad, they're lost. They're, most people aren't bad, they're broken. So we bring them to the great physician. That's what the bus ministry is going to be about at Three Years Baptist Church. And if that, God gives that man the strength to do it, I'm excited. I, I would love to. I, want, I, I was too young to see my dad in action on the bus ministry back in those days. I have vague, very fog memories of the bus in Chico. I was only like four years old. But I do remember getting my thumb 
closed in the, the airlock door and I cried like a big baby. Um, uh, we were in, at an apartment complex. And so I remember I was crying. Ah! My thumb got all cra- scratched up. And my dad was like, shut up. No, he didn't. Uh, but <laughs> he didn't do that. Um, you know, the bus driver did. Uh, but um, uh, so I, I, the bus ministry, I'd love to see my dad in action on the bus ministry. I think my dad's got a... Uh, this isn't a plug for my dad, but he's, God has given him talent and ability. And he's, he's excited to use it. You saw him today. Yeah. Jumping around like, what are we at a rave? Yeah. No. Uh, uh, but um, where's the mosh pit? Uh, it's in the primary church. Uh, but um, we can't, uh, we can't uh, uh, start a bus ministry without, without being willing to take people exactly as they are and try to get them saved and try to win the family and the parents to Christ. Reach the family. You know what the kids are? The kids are a foot in the door. Uh, Sean Goodpastor and I used to, Chapel Oaks was our area. It was our area, and there were two kids that would come to church uh, in, uh, from apartment 710. His dad, the dad, the dad had the kids, real cool dad, older dad. He had his hair, he looked like Don King. His hair was all up, and it was gray and black. You, can't we all just get along? And he would barbecue every Saturday. And Sean and I would swing by. He's like, Brother Jake, Brother Sean, come on over. And we'd eat, and we'd have a great time, and we'd meet the neighbors, and kids would come from all over, the and parents. And Brother Sean, good pastor, and I, dude, it was so easy. It was like shooting fish in a barrel, they say, signing people up for the bus. And a mother came up to us, and she said, I want to send my kids on the bus. And I said, great, where are they? How many do you have? She's like, I got seven of them. I'm like, hallelujah. Man, we could run our own bus over there. One bus designated to Chapel Oaks and Eden Green. And pick up all, it's not Eden Green anymore. They changed the name. Uh, but uh, uh, whatever the case, and pick them all up and fill up a bus. Amen. But you got to take them as they are. A lot of them have, a lot of those kids have been exposed to some almost unspeakable things. You know what the kids need? The kids need to come and hear speakable things. The kids need to come and hear that Jesus loves me, this I know. For the teacher shows me so. Yeah, the Bible tells them. But then the Bible tells me to love them as Christ would love them. Uh, I, I don't. I, I'm, I don't do this. I'm not big on. I don't go around broadcasting. But several months ago, I watched um, this series. I've not bought number two yet because they want you to buy it. But this series called the, um, the Chosen. The Chosen. Anybody seen that? Anybody? There's been all kinds of Bible videos and and this guy's Jesus. And there are a bunch of white dudes with blue eyes. And stuff. I'm like, I can't even take this serious. Uh, uh, but, um, uh, uh, you know, all these, these, these Noah and the passion of the Christ and the temptation of God and all these things. And I just, eh, can't do it. But I don't know, whoever did this one did it very, very, very well. And the person that played Jesus, he was just into people. He's just like into people, loving people. And I thought, man, Lord, I've started praying. Lord, give me that. Give me, give me that. Not that I want to be attractive, but I want who's inside of me to be attractive. I want Jesus to be lifted up and I want my light to shine. I want it to shine. You know, lights only shine in dark places. Well, I let my light shine. Yes, but you got to go to the dark to let it shine. The Bible says that Jesus was the light, and he came to the darkness. And the Bible says that the darkness comprehended it not. They went, what is that? What is, what is that? But he was there to show the truth. And we're going to get some pretty scarred up people. We're going to get some pretty beat up people. People who come in and they mean well. And they'll speak and they'll say, Brother Kevin, that was a blanking good service today. (laughs) And that's Pastor Jackson. Uh, uh, (laughs) We're going to get people come in and they're going to be weird. Some people are, man, they're going to, they're coming out of darkness and they're going to sit in the pew and they're going to, they're going to sit next to Francisco and be like, amen, stand up on the pew and be like, I love Jesus. 
And you're gonna be like, what's that weirdo doing? Bless God, who cares? They're getting saved. We're reaching their family. Bless, I mean, I, listen, we did it today. Brother, Brother Lucas and I laughed about it. We sang our special and it was like, chirp, chirp. Afterwards, you know, I wasn't expecting claps or anything because Brother Kevin comes down and, but it was really quiet. <laughs> Man, we need some Southern Baptist get up in here. Somebody play a banjo or something. Let's go. Um, uh, but people are going to come in as they are. I had a talk with a fellow down here one time, and he said, man, um, this guy was on the bus telling me that casting crowns was wrong and I shouldn't be listening to it, but that stuff really helped me. It changed my life. And I said, man, I don't doubt that it did because he went from corn and ACDC and Black Sabbath, and ah, you know, he went from that, hell's bells, and highway to hell to we love Jesus instead of we love the devil. So the words were changed, but I told him, brother, it's not the words, it's the music. It's how it's done. I said, take away the words and what do you have? You have rock and roll. I said, that music, Casting Crowns music is not on the playlist in heaven. And he just, I don't know if he liked it or not, but I gave him truth. Some people don't like to take the truth pill. They don't like that. But he said, and I told him, Hey, man, I don't doubt that it did. Just like I believe a new believer gets a Bible, they don't know anything about the King James Bible being the only Bible. They heard their grandfather say it or their grandmother say it, but, man, they got an NIV, and bless God, they're reading it. They're like, man, I want to be in it. I, I'm trying. I'm trying. Hey, they're a whole, and bless God, hang the NIV and the ESV and the ASV and all the rest of the perversions. Burn them. We ought to have a book burning. It ought to be all those perversions of the Scripture. That's fascist. I don't, whatever. Uh, the, hey, the King James Bible is the only Bible. Amen. The King James Bible is the only Bible. The King James Bible is the only Bible. The rest can burn in hell. Amen. And that goes for all my college buddies who have went the opposite way. That goes for all the people that used to go here who are now peddling in the devil's uh, 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 deceived works. Bless, bless God, when the devil came along to Eve, he, did, he said, hath God said, he's changed God's words. And this right here, and I would call your names if I had the guts, but I feel sorry for you. This right here is God's word to the English-speaking people. Perfect, inspired, and infallible. And if you don't like it and you want to intellectualize it, meet me out in the parking lot and I will physicalize it. Oh. Hello. Ah. Folks, you have to take me as I am. Uh, anyone starting a bus, my bus route must realize that we're going to bring in barefoot kids. We're going to bring in kids in the wintertime who don't have coats. We're going to bring in kids with girls who have short shorts on. Now, we have had things in the way. Hey, man, you got to go change. And w w w it's always nice to have a young, a nice dressed lady on the bus to be able to get off and, and who has developed a rapport with the family to say, hey, we... We can get, and listen, I'm telling you right now, don't be afraid to stand for what's right. These girls will get on the bus and they'll sing the songs and they'll go to class and it's all well and good. But we have this thing, um, um, you know, modesty. We have standards and convictions. And what happens is when the teacher teaches right and the bus captain teaches right and the, and, the, and the bus helper preaches right and teaches right and dresses right, that kid begins to say, Miss Jamie, Miss Crystal, Miss, uh, Miss, Miss Marshke, Miss Jackson, where can I get? Where can I get some skirts? See, that's what I've told people. I'm not the Holy Spirit. I will not be your Holy Spirit. I will be your preacher, but I will not be your Holy Spirit. I will preach the book. I will preach what God lays on my heart. I will try to do what's right by this book and do what's right in my actions and be above reproach. But bless God, I'm not going to come break your arm to do what's right. If you won't do what's right, then you're going to lose out on blessings and you're going to get God's chastisement. And that's not me putting a rain cloud above your head. That's just the book. And we have biblical authority. So when kids come along, I know, I'm sorry, I'm being loud. Is it too loud? Okay. It's like what? Being home? Oh, it's like being home. Ernesto yells at home? No, it's the kids, right? And Shut up, kids. <laughs> right. Um, I just know that we've, we've, we've been, um, 
I'm going to use the word tweaking. We have been tuning <laughs> the, uh, the, the system here, and Brother Alex has given some really good equipment, and the sound quality is fantastic. So, um, especially with my suave, smooth voice. Uh, welcome to Three Rivers Baptist. Okay, let's move along. Uh, but uh, uh, we have to, we have to understand that kids are, I had a kid in my Sunday school break his arm in my class. He came to church in a couple weeks and, and he, he had a cast on his arm. I'm like, oh, well, how'd you get a cast? He said, I broke my arm in Sunday school. I said, oh no. He said, it's okay. My mom said it was all right. She's not going to sue you. <laughs> said, Thank the Lord. Because I had some kids. I had a kid in my class. His name was Padrique. Padrique. And that kid, he could just stand there and flip, 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 flip. It was like, it was incredible to see what he did. I had acrobats in my class. So what do you think me as a young teacher did? We had acrobats. We had Cirque du Soleil in my class. It was incredible. I had kids flipping and hanging off of lights and they'd grab each other's feet and flip and they'd touch the ceiling with their feet. And I had mosh pits. I'd throw like a dollar in the middle of the floor and the kids would die for it. That's how he broke his arm. Uh, so I learned not to do that anymore. But man, you're going to have rowdiness. You're going to have kids running through the hall. You're going to have babies screaming. You're going to have a young girl who had a baby out of wedlock come in here and she doesn't want to give her baby up to the nursery and it's going to cry. We've had that done before, folks. That's nothing new. It's nothing but Crystal and Ernesto are sitting there going, what are we getting into? This is, what is going on? Now, um, uh, what I need to do is I need to, I need to stop. But I want to, I won't preach them, but I'm going to give you the points. So the why nots of the bus ministry, psh, there's a whole lot of cons, folks. But the pros outweigh the cons. And I'm going to give them to you next week. Uh, so tonight was the why not. Amen. Next week is the why. Amen. And this is uh, under the advice of Brother Warren Storm. He said, begin to preach on the bus ministry. Amen. Start prepping the atmosphere. Yeah. Start putting it in your... And we don't want to just, oh, hey, folks, by the way, we started the bus ministry. <coughs> no, it's going it, to... The church will build up with it. Because, Brother Pip, I don't want to... And Dr. and Mrs. Pohazi... I want to roll into the parking lot and have 50 kids on the bus. And you're like, I didn't make enough cookies. <laughs> I didn't set out enough chairs. Brother Jake, where are the chairs? And we have to pull out the chairs that teeter because they're unbalanced, you know. I, and you got kids the whole time teeter-totter, teeter-totter. And you're like, yeah, I don't want to. Listen, your hair is already white, Dr. Pohazi. I don't want to make you bald. You know, I don't. I don't, I, don't want, I don't want to add stress to you, but Brother Warren Storm has given me great advice on certain things to do and how to grow in increments and um, uh, different age groups to target. Uh, folks, this is going to be good. It's going to be good, I'm telling you. Why, why not start a bus ministry? Because it's hard. Don't, we should not start a bus ministry because it's status or because it's... No, we need to start a bus ministry to reach people to reach people and show them that Jesus Christ loves him that right there some people hate on it that's an uh, that's an idol you should take it down no it's not it's a reminder I don't know anybody in here who comes and bows down to that and if you do stop it knock it off there's no point in it might as well bow down to that wooden beam love how Elijah's like is it going to answer you is it going to talk back to you is it, what's it going to do it's not going to do anything. We serve a living God. And we serve, and I love, my risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living no matter what men say. Because I see his hand of mercy, and I, feel his, uh, and I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always there. He lives, he lives. I know he lives. He lives within my heart. And that's the message we want to share with every single rider that comes on the bus. Would you bow your head and close your eyes? What I'd ask for you to do tonight is I want you to pray for the bus ministry. And I want you to pray how you can get involved. Hey, if you want to get a class, a, if you want to get a class B with a passenger endorsement, uh, the church will help you with that. The church will help you. Uh, we have a bus out there that you can train on. We have a bus out there that you can do your, uh, your walk around trips on. Hey, if you say, you know what, I, I want, I'd like to, you know what I started off as is a door runner, we call them. 
I'd run up to the doors and I'd knock on the doors and I'd bring the kids. I was a crossing guard. That's how I started. And then I turned into a bus driver. Folks, don't be afraid to step out by faith. Some of you say, hey, I, I, I'm not going to work on the bus, but I can, def- I can dedicate five bucks a week. I can give 10 bucks a week. I can give to the bus ministry. I can help them buy the world's largest banana split for promotion, amen. So why don't you ask the Lord tonight to bless that bus, to give it longevity, and to fill it with souls of people in Fort Wayne who are looking for a church. Um, what I'm going to do is, you know what I'm going to do? I'm, 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 I'm not going to do an invitation. I'm going to ask you to pray with me right now. I'll lead in prayer, and I want you to pray right where you are. Your Heavenly Father, you have blessed this church it's, it's exciting to see and be a part of. I know some folks may not see it. They may not feel it. But a lot of folks who have been here for quite some time, they, they know and they see. <laughs> We're beginning to grow. <laughs> and it is incredible to be a part of. And I just want to take a moment, Lord, to say all glory to God. All glory to God. And it is all made possible because Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for our sins. And Lord, the hard part was done. The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's it. Nothing else. And that's the message we want to share with people. That they can be saved right where they are, right how they are, no matter what the conditions are. Lord, that's the motivation for us running the buses. Lord, I, I guess I'd like to say I dedicate Three Rivers Baptist Church dedicates that bus to the glory of Jesus Christ. Lord, uh, we will reach people. We will have compassion on people. We will love people. Lord, if you'll give us the means, give us the strength, the health, the ability to run that bus, we'll run it till the wheels fall off and we'll run it till you give us another one. Lord, I'd ask that you would um, help us in the days ahead, Brother Warren Storm, our church, to get excited, not just about running a bus, but it's what the bus represents, what it means. Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you for loving us. Bless us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Wednesday, 7 o'clock. Don't be.